Nebuchadnezzar built a statue. A huge statue. A huge gold statue. And then he threw a party. A huge party. A huge statue party. And the king ordered everyone, who was anyone, to be there. Princes, queens, statesmen, noblewomen. And they all came. Because nobody ever said no to King Nebuchadnezzar. Not if they knew what was good for them. <clears throat> Attention, everyone, exclaimed the king. Behold, my beautiful statue. And the people gasped, for they had never seen such a glorious sight. And then the king told them what he had planned to do. The tubas would play. The cymbals would crash. The trumpets would blare. The drums would pound. And at that very moment, every knee would bow to worship my beautiful statue. And anyone silly enough to refuse, anyone thoughtless enough to remain standing, would be thrown into a roaring furnace. Sounds reasonable to me, decided the people. Well, most of the people. Oh, yeah. There were those three guys with the death wish. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, those were the ones. What were they thinking? Because the tubas played. The cymbals crashed. And the trumpets blared. The drums pounded. And all those around them bowed to worship. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego continued to stand. Bring them to me, demanded the king. And so they were brought, because everyone obeyed the king. Well, that is everyone except the king. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, said the king. Maybe you misunderstood. He suggested. Maybe you weren't paying attention. He offered. Maybe we'll try this again. But this there, time. There will be no questions asked, and not even the god you serve can protect you from my power. The three men smiled and said, Your threat means nothing to us. Any idea who you're dealing with? Stammered the king. The, the thing is, they said, you really have no idea who you're dealing with. Our God is more than capable of getting us out of this mess. But even if he doesn't, it makes no difference to us. We will never, never bow to your statue. The king was filled with rage. Oh, his face is turning purple. Oh, the veins on his forehead just bulged. And then he shouted, turn up the fire and throw them in. And now, now this is the best part of the story. Because the most amazing thing happened. Wait a minute. Exclaimed the king. What's going on here? He asked. And who's that fourth guy in there? The men could have bowed. No one would have blamed them. Couldn't they have just bent their knee? Without bending their heart. Would that have made such a difference? They knew their God would save them. But even if he didn't, they knew their life was less important than honoring the one who gave it to them in the first place.